from an ab perspective, the mountain climbers probably aren't as good as you think they are. From a calorie perspective, because there is a lot of movement involved, they may be better suited for that. So this is something to consider. Here we are, another video, and a slightly different video because we're actually going to be talking about a workout. In fact, actually a home workout where we're looking at Growing Ananas, 35 minute full body hit and strength workout with weights, super sweaty dumbbell home workout. And the reason this is interesting is because a lot of my audience do actually work out from home. So obviously I want to make sure I'm providing adequate content surrounding the essentially assessment and analysis of home workouts. So hopefully you can benefit from something I'm saying and hopefully you can apply whatever I'm saying to something you're doing within your own workout, even if it's not directly the workout we're talking about. If at any point throughout this entire video you decide you like or even tolerate the video, please let me know by liking the video, maybe even comment down below in the comment section so you can let me know your thoughts and opinions, and potentially even consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red button down below, and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. We're gonna get straight into it. We don't need to hear anything because again, it, it's a workout we're gonna follow along. And we're gonna talk about a few of the movements, talk about why they're being done, what could be done differently, and things along those lines. So the HIT essentially stands for high intensity interval training, which is a means of training. Strength is obviously referring to the development of strength. How you define strength is obviously very much depend on you. And there are many different facets of strength. The actual workout itself, strength upper body, the dumbbell row. A couple of things here. So obviously she is adopting a neutral grip here. So when you're adopting more of a neutral grip, that typically shifts a bit more emphasis to the lats, so a muscle of the back, because it allows you to keep your arms a bit closer to the body, therefore, again, brings the lats more into it. If you were to flare your elbows due to change your grip position, perhaps that would bring a bit more of the upper back muscles into it. She's actually doing a few things here where obviously she's taking her elbows beyond the body. So essentially your lats are fully shortened, so at peak contraction, when they are in line with the body. You do not need to go further than that. If the elbows are flaring, you've got to think about whether upper back muscles are taking over. So for that, although it's a fantastic movement don't allow your arms to pass the body and keep your arms nice and close to the body throughout the entire movement then you're laughing a dumbbell hammer curl again is a variation for the biceps and the brachialis which is again a muscle underneath the biceps the big difference between a hammer curl and a regular curl is obviously the neutral grip when you're supinated so the palm is facing the ceiling you're bringing more of the biceps when you're neutral and the palm is obviously facing each other, you're bringing more the brachialis, so again, a muscle underneath the biceps. So I think there's a spelling mistake here because she says it's a three second hold dumbbell curl when in fact it is in, indeed a dumbbell row. Similar technique as presented before where the arms are going a bit further back than they need to. It seems like they are flaring as well when they can be kept a bit closer to the body. Holding the top of the movement, I actually back even whether you do that instead of what you did earlier or separately, I fully back holding the top of movements just to maintain a slight bit of additional tension during the peak contraction, which is obviously what she is doing here. So now we're doing a combo movement. I'm not really a big fan of combo movements, although from the home workout perspective, I do understand them a bit more, but we're essentially doing a bicep curl, which is just a standard curl, as I mentioned earlier, that brings in the biceps into a shoulder press where you're obviously gonna bring in the shoulder muscles, specifically potentially the anterior delt being the front of the shoulders and potentially the, the side delts too. And again, obviously triceps through the pressing due to elbow extension, when you're doing anything that straightens the arm, the triceps are gonna be involved. So this plank row is an interesting one because again, the one thing I really like about this is, so not only are back movements or back exercises typically neglected during home workouts, which Growing Ananas has obviously absolutely smashed, she's included quite a few back exercises in here, but this one as well obviously brings in elements of the core. Obviously, we, you call it a plank row, I call it a renegade row, where you're essentially in a plank position, rowing up, again, same as the row previously mentioned. But the big thing here is you, I'd probably, probably adopt a slightly wider stance because it may make that rotation a bit easier to avoid and we do typically want to avoid as much rotation as possible. I'm actually going to fully back diamond push-ups. Genuinely, from a home workout perspective, this diamond push-up variation where you're essentially bringing the elbows a bit closer to the body will shift a bit of emphasis over to the triceps as well, which is fantastic. And I, I, I fully back it. I think it's a fantastic variation. But please note, if you cannot do a push-up in your feet on your feet, don't stress about it, just drop down to the knees. If it's easier for you, you can work up to progressing towards the feet when you're ready to, which again, may take a long time, may not take a long time. It really does depend on you and your abilities, but don't ever stress about that. You are far more capable than you probably realize. Chest press, this is fantastic. We're throwing in a floor press again, a bit limited for the chest here, because again, you are working out at home, but you can certainly get a good chest workout in and doing something like a floor press, push up variations, things like that are a big yes from me. What I would say about the chest press is obviously you see her elbows are really flared out. I 
I tuck them in personally. So I usually try and press at about 45 degrees or so. Again, it better lines up with the fiber orientation of the pecs. And for me, it takes a lot of pressure off my shoulders when I have had shoulder issues in the past. And you may find not only does it work your, your chest more effectively, it may also be, like I said, a bit easier on your shoulders too, which is probably a win for most people. The thing about this lean back press is a question, although you're leaning back, is that lean back actually gonna become a bit of a hindrance because is your lower back or core gonna fatigue faster than your shoulders are? If you are gonna do a lean back, could you not lean against the wall perhaps to then eliminate the core as a potential weakness or weak link, thus allowing you to put a bit more emphasis on the shoulders and not worry about whether you're buckling, whether your back hurts, things like that. And also similar with the chest press, you can tuck the elbows about 45 degrees if you so wish, although you don't have to. It just might be a bit easier to go through a full range of motion if you do so. I must very quickly say, obviously, as you know, the TFNL coaching application form where you can work with either myself or ride on a one-to-one -one basis is obviously linked down below in the description, as is the group coaching, which is again, a group coaching platform where I create programs for home workouts and gym workouts for you guys to follow as a community or individually if you so wish, which again is always linked down below in the description and is cheaper than your Netflix subscription. And also the TFNL Growth Guide and TFNL Home Workout Handbook, which are workout resources that include lots of information about working out at home and at the gym, and also lots of weeks of programming. So over 30 weeks of home workout programming and 30 weeks of gym workout programming included in, in them, uh, always linked down below in the description as well, if you so fancy. So the mountain climb is an interesting one because the mountain climb is often really adopted as like an ab exercise, when in reality, the distance between the sternum and the pelvis doesn't really change here. The abs aren't actually going through like a contractile range of motion, especially not against resistance. From an ab perspective, the mountain climbers probably aren't as good as you think they are. From a calorie perspective, because there's a lot of movement involved, they may be better suited for that. So just just something to consider. So now we're at the halfway point. Again, I wasn't gonna include all movements because there's so much to go through. We're gonna look at the lower body. The lunge with the knee drive. Again, the lunge is a fantastic movement, although technically this is more of a reverse lunge, which might actually be easier on your knees than a typical lunge. The knee drive, again, is something you want to include if you so wish. It's not gonna work the muscles any more effectively, but because there is additional movement involved, it may lead to potentially a slight increase in calories burned. But again, that's on you. With the lunge, all I would say is go through a full range of motion as she is doing here. Don't hit your knee on the floor, that will probably hurt, but you can certainly tickle the floor with your knees if you're able to do so safely. The RDL is a big yes from me. It's arguably my favorite at home hamstring movement. Like I mentioned with the back earlier being commonly neglected in home workouts, the hamstrings too are also commonly neglected. Doing an RDL is fantastic. It very much works the hamstrings and the glutes both in their length and position, which is a big yes for those two muscle groups. The big thing here is going as far back as your hips will allow. So you see when she gets past the knees, her hips no longer start going backwards. She just starts going down. Once you've reached that point and the hips are no longer going backwards, that means your hamstrings and glutes aren't going through any additional range of motion and your lower back is in fact taking over. So you can actually cut range of motion a bit, which will hopefully prevent you from feeling it as much in your lower back and keep that tension on the hamstrings and the glutes. But as a whole, the RDL is fantastic. You could do a B stance, single leg, both legs at the same time. You could even do a good morning as well. You've got so many variations if you so wish. The front squat is a bit of a tricky one because again, front squats or anterior loaded squats are typically hard to progress with. Where the weight is positioned, your core may give out first, your arms may give out first, your shoulders may give out first. But with the consideration that you're working out at home and you probably don't have access to a barbell for back squats, I fully back it. I think getting a squat variation there is great. Whether you do this or goblet squats is largely up to you. Whichever one you can load heavier is what I would say. What you could also do is chuck a, a plate or something underneath the heels, elevate the heels, which will allow you to go through a greater range of motion, which means you can lengthen the quads a bit more and potentially work the quads even more effectively. So just an option. So the dumbbell duck walk is very much a movement that will burn a lot because you see there is no point where she's fully straightening her legs. Therefore, the quads are remaining under constant tension throughout the entire movement. Issue is, although it does burn a lot and you can certainly include it if you so wish this may be quite hard on people's knees so if this does hurt your knees do not feel pressure to include it a, a variation you could probably swap it with would be something like a wall sit which again keeps the quads under a lot of tension for a significant period of time but might be a lot easier on the knees which he's actually now including afterwards anyway so ignore everything i've just said and skip the duck walks entirely if they hurt your knees and go straight into the wall sit so we've got some glute bridges here so we're working the glutes in a shortened position what i would probably do is actually bring the feet a bit closer so we can keep the shins a bit more vertical. This again shifts a bit of emphasis away from some other leg muscles and keeps a bit more emphasis on the glutes throughout the entire movement. So again just bring it in a little bit more, keep the emphasis on the glutes, working them in the shortened position which means that the majority of tension is at the top of the rep not the bottom and you should be laughing. And again if this is too easy for you with the weights you have please consider do it unilaterally which I'm sure she'll probably do at some point and unilaterally obviously means one leg at a time. So the thing with like a reverse crunch is again you want to actually kind of do it at the top here is you want to reduce the distance between the pelvis and the sternum to again bias a bit more of the lower ab fibers. So again, that involves 
tucking the hips up and trying to crunch into the pelvis and not just keeping the hips planted and moving with the hip flexors. Whether you hold the dumbbell there or not, it's completely up to you. It's not gonna make the movement any harder for the abs. It may just stabilize you a bit. If you wanna make the movement harder for the abs, you put the dumbbell between the feet because again, the legs are what's going through that range of motion to then bring the pelvis up to the sternum. We're going into more like hit or calorie burning movements now. Things where there is a bit more momentum, things where there are more moving parts may typically take emphasis away from like muscle hypertrophy, so the development of the muscle itself and shift a bit more emphasis over to the, the burning of calories perhaps, which is absolutely fine. Again, this workout was targeted not only the HIIT workout, but the strength workout too. And we've got some adequate and some pretty solid upper body resistance exercises. We've got some pretty solid lower body resistance exercises. And now we're shifting a bit more emphasis over to momentum and movement to again, maybe incorporate a bit more of the HIIT aspect of things where, where calorie expenditure and calorie burning is a bit more of a priority than simply building muscle. Because it ultimately comes down to, are you moving and are you working? More movement when it comes to the realm of calorie expenditure is probably quite an important thing, whereas more movement when you're looking at building muscle is maybe not quite as important. Lots of movement means you're likely going to be burning more calories than if there was less movement, which to me it is a win-win if that's what you are looking to achieve from your workouts. But as a whole, honestly, I, I do think Growing Anna has actually produced some really good high-quality workouts. Again, although they don't necessarily align with my preferences and my workout style, I understand that this channel is not built on my preferences and how I work out. This channel is built on providing an analysis and hopefully some help to people with many different goals, be that high hypertrophy, fat loss, strengthening, whatever it may be, because a lot of those goals actually do go hand in hand. And a lot of what I say can be applied to all of those things. So again, it's almost like a universal approach to fitness, we'll say. But I think she does some good stuff. And I think like a year and a half ago, she commented on my video saying she loved my pineapple hat. So immediately she's my friend now. She just doesn't know it. Comment question of the week. What kind of training do you do if you're away for a few days in a place without access to a gym and you feel like working out? For you, potentially, you could do whatever you want. You could do body weight workouts, you could do whatever workouts, tickle your fancy on YouTube, like growing an Anna's workouts, Caroline's workouts, whatever it may be, and depending on your goals. But for me personally, if I'm away for a few days without access to a gym, what I'll typically do is kind of forward plan and use that few days as a deload or just some time off. But again, if you want to work out, there are also options. Just for me personally, if I am going away and I have access to a gym, I typically, like I said, try and time it so I can use that opportunity to rest and recover. But that's it. That is the video. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my endless analysis of things on the, on the line. And thank you for tolerating the video.